All right, Sonic Yoda from SegaDriven.com here, and welcome back to the Sega Driven YouTube channel. We're going to be talking about educational Sonic games again because um, I bought one of these. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is a Leapster 2, uh, the second revision of the Leapster educational video game systems for kids. Um, and yeah, I mainly wanted this specifically for one game, which we're going to be talking about today, which is Sonic X <laughs> for the Leapster. Um, yeah, this is a learning game and it basically teaches maths to kids who like Sonic the Hedgehog aged between five and seven. Um, so yeah, the Leapster originally released in 2003. Uh, this model came a little bit later, um, but yeah. Uh, the Sonic X game came out in 2005 and it was developed by Taurus Games, uh, who you may know, they're pretty prolific Australian developer. They do lots of um, kids games based on licensed properties for lots of different systems, but yeah, so they're, they're no stranger to kids games. But yeah, we're going to take a look at the Sonic X game for the system. Um, yeah, I'm really excited about this, obviously based on the 2003 animated series. Um, <laughs> just a daft thing, I love that this exists, um, and yeah, we're going to take a look at it. Okay, so here we go, this is the Leap to uh, home menu. We're going to get into Sonic X by touching this here cartridge. cartridge game. And we're going to play some of this. Ah, uh, there's Chris Thorndike. Beloved Sonic character, missed by many. It's all the original voice cast, so that's pretty cool. Original, like, voice samples as well. Sonic looking a bit weird there. Not so fast. You'll have to get by my greatest inventions ever. My wonderful math robots. Sonic. Math robots. Those math robots and rescue our friends. You're the only one who can do it. I'm always up for a challenge. Bring it on. Let's do it, Sonic. <laughs> He's so goofy. Okay, so that's our setup. Press the A. Let's get into Press the A button to enter Station Square. Station Square, which is the first area of the game. So each area has three acts. So we'll, we'll do the third act. And yeah, like you can see, it's uh. So yeah, you're not punished if you get things wrong. It just helps. Uh, Sort of guide you to the right answer, so you'll see when I get to it. We're looking for number 20. Yeah, you can't go past until you find the right answer. And there you go, that's number 20. You get some rings for your efforts. Uh, when you get an incorrect answer, it basically makes the correct answer flash. Um, so yeah, it's very simplistic, um, and it's just trying to guide you through the game and get you used to learning simple mental maths, to be honest. So these are actually checkpoints and not the end of the stage post. Um, so yeah, a bit of a mix up there. So I want to find 52. There it is. So every stage has 99 rings in it. And when you get all 99, you get a Chaos Emerald. Uh, there are seven Chaos Emeralds and a Master Emerald to get throughout the game. And uh, yeah, once you get the lot, you've uh, completed it to its fullest capacity. I love that it manages to do um, the loops really smoothly. It actually takes control off you so that it just runs through an animation essentially during those sections, but um, you know, it's got the visual flair you'd expect from a Sonic game. Right, here's one of the mini games. You get lots of these during the stages. Oh god. Right, okay, numbers in order. So, we've got to use the stylus for this. There we go. I'm honestly just super impressed with the presentation. The animation's really nice. 
Um, it controls well. Obviously, it's not particularly fast because, you know, it's a kid's game that needs to be manageable. Platforming solid. Okay, 71. Let's go find it. There it is. Isn't that just a lovely little animation when he does his thumbs up? It looks like they've traced Sonic Advance sprites, but making them look like the 16-bit Sonic 3 sprites, which is really strange. It's like a weird mashup of both. Um, which way am I going? I'm assuming I need to go down and jump over this spring. Right, so let's do one of the Angel Island stages. So again, I thought this was just going to use um, like graphics from the Mega Drive games. So, you know, just based on Angel Island from the first level of Sonic 3. Uh, no, all original graphics. Uh, really lovely that they've gone to the effort to draw all this, to be honest with you. Presentation's gorgeous. Let's see if I can show you one of the, uh, the, uh, one of the other mini-games, because there's a different style for each of the different areas that you're in. Okay, mini-game time. Not the math robots. Okay, so we need to add three more. And you circle them with the stylus. So. Oh. Come on. Come on. There we go. So yeah, so there is a little bit of a variety to the mini games at least, but like I say, most of the math questions are very repetitive because uh, yeah, it's trying to engage you and keep the keep it so it the, the maths is sticking in your mind by doing it through repetition. Right, so we'll do one of the stages from Eggman's base as well. Initially, I thought a lot of these graphics were from the advanced games, but I think they are custom. And that'll be nine. There we go. There we go. I love that animation. As you can hear, the voice samples are a lot better than the uh, music. <laughs> Processing power for the music, obviously not as good on this system. And it is for voice samples. Okay, another mini game. It's time for aerial automations. There are five math robots. Use the pen to tap one math robot. Ready to play? So this is a subtraction game, basically. There are eight math robots. Tap math robots until there are only four math robots left. Okay, so I'm taking away four. Bosh. And that's about it, really. So yeah, like I say, nothing particularly special... Um, Gameplay wise, it's solid enough, it controls well, the platform is decent. And but most of the gameplay is basically just doing simple mass questions and doing them through repetition so that it sticks. And that's fine for what it needs to be. I'm just glad that it's presented in such a lovely way. Um I think if you had this and you were within the sort of five to seven year old age bracket, I think this would be a really engaging little thing and Honestly, I just love that there's so much effort has gone into the um, presentation. I think it's a really visually appealing little thing. Certainly worth looking at if you're a Sonic fan as well, um, because I think they've done a really good job with the presentation, to be honest. It's just very pretty, really well animated. Sound is good, even if the music is a little bit tinny. And it does what you'd expect from a Sonic game, to be honest with you. Obviously, there's very little action in that there's not really any bad nicks and stuff. To, to attack, but it's not that sort of game. It's an educational title, so that's to be expected. So there you go. Um, I actually think this is quite a decent little package, to be honest with you. Presentation is really, really lovely. I love that the fact that they've used existing Sonic sprites and added animation to them to make them really flashy and really sort of um, 
animated and they've got lots of character to them which is really really cool um it's really nice to play the controls are solid um i can't really fault it to be honest with you in that it's a bit repetitive as most educational games are but that's the whole point of them that you know you learn through repetition so you continue to do similar sums and it slowly starts to stick when you're of this age range <laughs> um but yeah it's a really solid little package i had a lot a lot of, a lot of fun with this to be honest with you and um yeah it's it's a certainly an interesting little uh sidestep in the old sonic franchise that's well worth hunting down if you want to stick it in your sonic collection because it's relatively inexpensive and so are the systems to be honest with you so well worth checking out if you are missing this from your collection <laughs> honestly had a lot of fun with this the leapster is a daft little thing it's obviously not aimed at me but i think uh be because it's obviously directed specifically at such a younger age group and you know specifically making software for for, the, for that age range and it being educational there's something really charming and attractive about it to be honest with you uh yeah i played this to completion it's <laughs> it's a solid little title like i say very repetitive but presentation wise really impressive <laughs>